Hi, this is Dr. Nick. I'm the Incrementalist here with Incremental Insights for Better Business, Better Health. And I'm Fred Golson with Accountable Health here helping employers work on their employee benefits programs and overall improvement in employee health. So Nick, we got a lot of vaccine out there, but we're beginning to run up against this issue of vaccine hesitancy. Your thoughts? Well, so first of all, let's sort of talk about that watershed moment of who, who'd have thunk it. Um, we reached an excess of vaccine that exceeds the demand. I, I don't, you know, just the fact that that's the case is extraordinary. Unfortunately, for some of the wrong reasons, it's not that we don't have the people to vaccinate, but because there is resistance. And, you know, let me divide up a couple of sort of strands on this. First of all, understand resistance. You know, if you don't know what's going on, you know, just accepting things is very difficult for people. And we've even seen it in the healthcare space, a little bit more of a struggle for me because I would expect folks to be in the healthcare space. And I'm even talking clinical professionals who are saying I'm not having this vaccine. And some of that's to do with, or at least I believe, um, this perception that this is, you know, it, it, it's happened too quickly. There's no way that this could be safe. We haven't removed all the risk. Well, it doesn't matter how long we continue to test things out. We can never remove all the risk, number one. Number two, that forgets that this is essentially a solution that has been built on the shoulders of giants. And, and by that, I mean going back as far as Jenner's cowpox, which that was 1796. Edward Jenner, working in the south of England, found that an animal virus, cowpox, could protect against disease caused by a human virus. But the word virus, unknown. The word pox, they knew pox because, you know, that was essentially a descriptive term. You know, in the good old days when medicine was really descriptive, you knew. Uh, and, and to be clear, many of the anatomical terms I learned uh, are, are essentially sourced out of Latin. So the acetabulum, which is where the hip sits in, uh, acetabulum is a bowl. And it looks exactly like a bowl. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, side note. So we, we've got, you know, this incredible progress from people that didn't even understand. That's back in 1796. And then we've had all of these innovations and we've learned each and every time. The most recent that's relevant to us is this uh, messenger RNA vaccine. And we knew about those a number of years ago, thanks to the dogged determination of some uh, researchers who just wouldn't give up on this. But what they got together with another organization and some other researchers was a method of delivering. The problem with messenger RNA is it sort of, it, it gets chewed up in the body. They found a way to sort of deliver it successfully. So this is not a vaccine that's 12 months, six months, or whatever you want to call it. This is a vaccine that's hundreds of years in the development. Everything that we learn, including all the mistakes. And understand, we've had challenges, we've had problems, but we learn from all of that. So understand that and apply that to the thinking. And to be clear, I know you have, I have, my whole family has. In fact, my family represents the full spectrum of, of vaccination. We've had every one that's uh, uh, legally valid in the, in the United States. We've got a full uh, study, albeit it's a small end, but you know, it is there. <laughs> so that's part one. Part two is the folks who just seem to be, I, I don't know how to, how can I politely describe them? They, they don't seem to, I, I, I don't know what their reality consists of. They are believing information that is pushed out by folks who have a vested interest, typically financial. Let's pick, you know, the non-physician who was struck off the register, who created much of the measles um, MMR uh, resistance based on a study that was 12 children. And he falsified the data and he had a financial interest in the outcome and in terms of the treatment. And that's essentially the big people that are pushing out this information have a vested interest, there's 12 of them. And what, what do they care? Well, they want you to buy jade eggs to stick in places. And I, I, I just, and what's a struggle for me is this is damaging because we need to vaccinate as many people around the world as possible. We cannot afford this resistance. Yeah, it's really interesting. And to see a year plus into this and the vaccines have been going through all their tests, et cetera, 
And then to have somebody come out like this gentleman in uh, California with the Orange County Board of Supervisors who asked the physician in Orange County, does it track? Is there any intention of tracking folks? The Orange County Healthcare Agency director said, nope, there is no intention of tracking folks with vaccine passports. And he said, the, the supervisor then said, is there any in the vaccine? We heard about the injection of a tracking device. Is that being done anywhere in Orange County? So imagine that some people will listen to that and they believe it. It's a complete irresponsibility. Anybody that is in any position to be perpetuating those kind of myths, stop watching TV and science fiction series. If we could do that stuff, we'd have been doing it a long time ago, but we're not. <laughs> and to be honest, the coordination of sticking things into needles, just watch the process. How would you know which chip got injected into you? So let's be clear, there is no basis, but it is the responsibility of people to make sure that they perpetuate facts. And if I had one piece of advice that I think I try and live by, always have a level below anything that you're going to share as an expert. So whenever I share an article, I read the original story, not the media story or the media headline. And if you don't do that, you're doing a disservice to all of your fellow mankind. So it's go to the source. That's what's important. And understand the, the, the relevance of that source. And understand also when you look at scientific articles, etc., you'll see the limitations of the study if they're any good. They'll talk about what it does say or potentially says and some reasons why there may be issues with it in the limitation section. And I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I'm just an ordinary physician. I don't have a virology background, immunology, all of those. And all of these people are contributing and I pay attention to all of them and try and <clears throat> distill some of that. But here's what I would say about the papers. I, I just did the count today because I was curious. I have 506 papers that I have read over the past year. So that's information that I've consumed, digested, you know, and made some determination based on the statistical analysis, the validity of those studies. Not all are as good or, you know, and I try and disseminate that extraordinarily carefully because I think it's really important to disseminate information that is as accurate as it can be at the time that it's disseminated. Absolutely. And we appreciate you looking at all of those 506 studies, Nick. That's incredible. So this is Fred Goldstein with Accountable Health. Thank you so much for listening this week. If you'd like more information, please go to AccountableHealthLLC.com. And this is Dr. Nick. I'm the Incrementalist here with Incremental Insights for better business, better health.